Well, our story does actually have kind of a miraculous intervention uh, in that our journey to Haiti started with Pastor Bob kind of coercing Sheena to go on a missions trip for her very first time. How many have ever been coerced by Pastor Bob to go on a missions trip? He's very, very gifted and good at it, but it's a life-changing and transforming thing. So um, that's, that's where our story began four years ago when Sheena went to Haiti with a team here from The Rock. And um, I mean, our lives have, have not been the same ever since. We've been going back for four years, or Sheena's been going for four years. I've been going for three years. Uh, I was thinking to this January, it'll be her fourth birthday in a row that she celebrated in Haiti. And so that's something that's just kind of a special, um, special thing for our family. But um, we've got a little video that we want to show you just about what we experienced this past year in Haiti, and we'll share a little bit more about what we are doing this coming year. Mission of Grace is in a rural town about an hour north of Port-au-Prince, and it's set in a mountainous community of about 8,000 people right along the Caribbean Sea. And we currently have two orphanages that care for about 90 children, and my husband and I get the privilege of being mom and dad to them. It's no secret that Haiti has a long history of corruption in their government, as well as deep ties to voodoo. And so one of the responsibilities that we take very seriously is training up these children to be God-fearing, integrous leaders. We also have an elderly home, which is almost completely unheard of in a place like Haiti, where the elderly are cast aside and literally left on the streets to die. So one of the things that we really like about Mission of Grace is that we are reaching out into the community. And it's not just this compound where we bring people to and rescue them from whatever's going on in their lives, but we are day in and day out um, touching people where they are. And we have a free medical clinic that is a part of that, as well as a school and a church. We have a single mom's home. We have a young girl's home. We have a young men's home that we provide vocational training and discipleship. And really we're, we're trying to have a holistic approach of transforming this entire community, not just the people that we bring in under our direct care. I remember one day a little girl had come into our medical clinic with a severely burnt hand. And when we asked her mother what had happened, she said about a week earlier, the little girl had taken a sip of her father's juice and it made him so angry that he stuck her hand in a fire and he held it there as she screamed in pain. And our, our clinic was not equipped to deal with this injury, so we scraped together what little cash we had and we drove her to a hospital 30 minutes away. And then later on, the mother called us and said her other three children were in danger as the father had threatened to pour gasoline on them and set them on fire. So she brought them to us the next day and they remained in our care for several months while their sister was in the hospital recovering. The level of poverty and lack of knowledge and education are at times very overwhelming. One day, as my mom and I were walking through the village, we came across a tiny baby that we thought was a newborn. But it turns out he was over three weeks old and had never nursed because his mother's milk didn't come in right away. And so she gave up and she was just kind of waiting for him to die. He definitely looked on the verge of death. Fortunately, this story has a happy ending as we were able to convince her neighbor to be a temporary wet nurse. And we were able to teach the mother some nursing techniques. Her milk came in and today the baby is growing and is healthy. Nearly every day a mom is knocking on our door asking us to take their child and many of the children in our orphanage came because their parents simply could not afford to feed them or they were so sick and the parents didn't know what else to do. The needs are endless and many times they are literally life and death situations. It is a far cry from our safe, comfortable suburban life. But I think of the verse in Matthew when Jesus says, for whoever loses their life for my sake will find it. And that's not to say that having a suburban life with a white picket fence is wrong. There's nothing wrong with that. But we found for us that there's just no comparison to the satisfaction of crashing into bed each night, knowing that you gave everything you had that day. You poured everything you had into serving others. And then you pray that God multiplies your sleep. And then you get up in the morning and do it all over again the next day. And we've just found that there's nothing in the world like giving your life and pouring your life out for others.
so that's just kind of a small snapshot of you know what our life was like for six months while we were in Haiti. Obviously, a lot of those things are hard to see, and stories are difficult to hear. And I mean, it's only a few of the the things that we experience on a daily basis. And um, you know, that's really life in the majority world outside of America and a lot of the Western world. It's it's where um, you know it's how people live every single day in different circumstances, maybe, but. Um, there's challenges. And so for us, we, we know that God has called us there. Uh, we're going back in three weeks for another season. We don't exactly know how long. We're just trusting that God's going to provide. And however long he provides for us, that's how long we'll be there. Um, we're just trusting that he's going to help us in continuing to build the relationships that we've established there and, um, and checking in on some of these lives and some of these stories. Cullen uh, was with us. He he came a couple of days after we did in January with the intent of only staying a couple of months, um, and he just got home last week. He stayed for 11 months, and um, you know, again, his life has been tremendously transformed by that. And he was able to check on the girl that that had the burned hand uh, a couple of months ago, and and she's doing okay. Uh, you know, she's alive. Her fingers were amputated, um, but it's you know, it's a, a challenge. She's going to be having to live with that, obviously, for a long time. Um, a lot of the, the faces that you saw in the video are, are no longer with us. They, several of them have passed away this year uh, from a variety of different things. And, and again, it's just, it's how it is. And so uh, we know that for us, this is where we're called for this time and this season. And we're going to continue to walk out in obedience, the call that God's put on our lives. You know, we all have situations and opportunities in front of us and whatever God calls you to do, the important thing is obedience. And um, Pastor Francis is going to talk a little bit about that today and just living out what God has said for you to do. But, um, you know, there, obviously there's plenty of opportunity all around us. There's opportunity um, throughout the world. Haiti's not the only place, but that's where God's taking us. So we appreciate the opportunity to share a little bit with you guys about that. And thank you for your love, for your support, for your prayers as we go back. And um, we'll keep you updated as best we can. Sheena's very good at doing that. I'm not so much. But um, we have our website is join us in the journey is just um, how we keep updated as well as on Facebook and, and Instagram and things like that. So if you want to follow along, you're definitely more than welcome to. We encourage you to. And if you want to come visit us in Haiti, uh, talk to Pastor Bob. He will definitely get you there. So, okay. <laughs> <laughs>